All right, so in the past, money has taken on many forms. Uh, many times throughout history, money has been credit money. And so that's the use of tally sticks. People would keep, you know, notches on sticks to, uh, to you know, kind of keep a record of who owed who what. And those sticks would actually trade as currency if I owe you a favor and then, uh, you know, I you need to go do something, you know, buy something from somebody. You can just give that person the favor that I owe you as payment for uh, whatever you're buying from them. And so now I owe that other person a favor. So credit and debt has circulated as money for thousands of years and arguably before the rise of commodity money like uh, gold coins. But we know that uh, monetary systems that are uh, founded on you know gold and silver commodity money, anything that is in short supply that cannot be easily counterfeited or manipulated, those systems tend to produce the greatest wealth in a society. And so anytime you see historical records of debasement of coins or fiat currencies, typically you see cases of inflation or hyperinflation and economic decline. Now, before World War II, most of the world was on a gold standard, so you could take your gold and go anywhere in the world. There was really a one world currency. It was gold. And so you could exchange anywhere in the world with that. But most countries during World War II, they spent almost all their money. And so instead of rebuilding from scratch, they just said, well, America's got a lot of gold. So instead of having our uh, our paper backed up by gold, we'll have our paper backed up by dollars. And then if we want, we can always redeem those dollars for gold. That system lasted for a few decades until America got too greedy. They printed a lot more dollars than they actually had gold to back it up. And now the front, since then, the rest of the world has been on a fiat standard where every country just has their own paper money. So there's nothing that backs it up. Uh, except for debt. And so right now we're living in a credit or a debt based monetary system. And that's actually not new. We've had, uh, you know, historical cases, anthropological records show that there, are, you know, for thousands of years, we've had examples of credit-based money systems, debt-based monetary systems. Well, it looks like this debt-based money system is coming to an end and central bank digital currencies, CBDCs, these are what's kind of paving the way for the transition away from a debt-based money system. Now, I wanna pause here and mention everything that we're gonna talk about here Every single point itself could be its own, you know, hour long seminar, lecture, video, whatever you want. Uh, there's a lot to be said about each of these topics. And so I will be incorporating information from, you know, this, this whole entire movement towards central bank digital currencies, the new uh, Bretton Woods system, what we need to, you know, the, the changes in the monetary landscape that are coming. I'm going to be talking about this for a long time in most of my videos. And so we're not going to explore in detail every aspect of all these points. So just keep in mind, I'll be talking about all of these things going forward. Essentially, though, the age of paper money or the age of uh, debt-based fiat is coming to an end, and China is has beaten the world to the punch by being the first, uh, you know, the first country to roll out a uh, a trial or a beta test of its central bank digital currency. 